Welcome back to another episode of Smalls That Sell and Making Money with Woodworking. For those that are new to the channel and really not sure what this is all about, we take the hot and trending items from the big box stores, break them down so you can put your own twist to it and build these things at home. And the whole point of me showing you how I break these things down is so you can learn to do it yourself. And when the time comes and you see something that you really want to build, you'll know exactly how they built it. And instead of wondering if you can build something like that, this is what you'll be thinking. So yes, I'll be telling you how they built a lot of these things, but kind of look at each one of these as a training exercise to grow your ability to break these things down in your head. And just like everything else, the more that you practice doing it, the better you get at it. So let's go ahead and get some more practice in and hop into this first one. So this first one that we're gonna be breaking down is from one of my favorite places on earth. I guess it's like the Disneyland of woodworking. With the prices that they are charging and getting, it has to be the happiest place on earth. I sure know I would be happy if I were getting these kind of prices. But this first one is going to be a set of wooden boxes. Wooden boxes are always popular. They're always in. And you will always find them in every big box store. The only difference that you're going to notice will be different styles and different shapes. And the reason why these things never go out of style is because they are multifunction. You can decorate with them. You can store things in them. And... They're cheap to make. So whenever I first came across this set of three for $70, I was actually kind of surprised with the price. I figured the old PB would throw an extra zero on the back end of it, or it would at least be two or $300 for the set. But I was just going off of the photos. And in the photos, these things look pretty big. But then once I got down into the description of these things, they are calling them slim rustic boxes. So then I took a look at the dimensions and these things are actually really small. It's just the angles of the photos and how they've used multiple slats of wood to make the bottoms that makes them look a lot bigger than what they are. So to tell you what I'm talking about, the small box is two and three quarters of an inch tall, three and three quarters of an inch wide and 14 inches long. So yes, these things are long, but they're really skinny. They weren't lying whenever they said it's a slim design. Even the largest box is only six inches tall, four inches wide and 18 inches long. So those dimensions are what would make this a perfect pallet wood project. And you can even upsize each one of these. These things look awesome as a slim design, but you could double the width and the height and really create a nice looking product. And every joint is a butt joint. They're trying to make this thing look as primitive and rustic as they can. But to break down what they are selling, I'm going to take a look at this medium box. So the medium box is four and a half inches tall. And whenever they give dimensions, it will be from the tallest point. So by knowing that the total height is four and a half inches and it's actually sitting on a half inch material, we know that the end boards are four inches tall. And then the little decorative hump or whatever you'd like to call it that's there on the end, it's only about a half of an inch tall. It doesn't really look like it in this picture. It looks like it would be, you know, maybe an inch, but it's not because these things are so slim. So if the notch is taking up a half of an inch of that four inch board, that means that these things will arch down to three and a half inches. That means that both of these side pieces will be three and a half inches wide by 16 inches long. And there's really only going to be one last thing that we need, and that's going to be the width of the end pieces. So this entire box is only three and a quarters of an inch wide from outside to outside. I told you these things were super narrow and pictures can be deceiving but going off of that dimension three and a quarter and then we have a half of an inch on each side that means that our end pieces are only two and a quarter of an inch wide each so basically for this build you need two pieces that are two and a quarter inches wide by four inches tall mark the center of your width measure down a half of an inch and then you can draw and jigsaw out this little arch on the end now you have the hardest part of this entire build done Everything else is just square stock and butt joints. We've already said that the two sides are going to be three and a half inches tall by 16 inches long. And the only thing left that we would need would be the bottom. The total width for this thing is only three and a quarter inch wide. So you can either cut a three and a quarter by 16 inch board, or you can do like they did and actually make narrower strips. Maybe cut like a two and a quarter and a one inch strip or whatever that you would like. Or you can cut even smaller strips than that. It's just going to give it a little bit more character. And to assemble this thing, the only thing that they have done is use wood glue, brad nails, rough this thing up a bit, put a medium dark stain on it, and call it good. Any of these sizes would be super simple to build. Perfect pallet wood or fence picket projects. I would double or triple the size of these things, then test your market using different staging. Again, the cool thing about boxes is you can do all kinds of things with them. So stage some up inside the house, stage some up outside. You can even stage some of these up as small planters for like herbs and things like that that people keep in their windowsill. Just an idea. But when you're making a box, you really have to think outside of the box to make your product 
totally different than everyone else's. And if you're still with me this far into the video, then obviously you like a little something about this topic. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and support the channel. Only about 30% of the people out there watching right now are actually subscribed. So 70% of the people watching this video right now are not subscribed. So just think of half of those people subscribed, the possibilities that we could grow this channel into. So this next one caught my eye for several different reasons. And it's these handmade sculptures that they are getting $40 a piece for. So when I look at this, I don't see a handmade sculpture. I guess it's in the eye of the beholder, but I see a four by four with angles on each side and a piece of rope ran through it. But that's just one thing that I see. The reason why I like this build so much is because of the theme, okay? So this is a nautical theme. We've covered nautical items before, and the great thing about this theme is that it's always in in some form or fashion. People will decorate their entire rooms. If you're close to the beach, they'll be decorating their entire house or condo in this theme. Or anyone that has a pool, there's probably a good chance that they have a nautical theme around the pool. And with that, that's where we get a little deeper into like the psychology of marketing. So for most of us, we do not live on the beach and it is one of the most popular vacation destinations. So, so whenever you see items like this, you think about the beach, you think about vacation, you think about relaxation. And then of course you want all of those things, so you buy it. And then of course, because marketing is their job, they're gonna offer three different sizes of these, which happens to be nine inch, 12 inch, and 15 inch, and they're still $40 a piece. And then they started using a little bit bigger material. But when it all boils down to it, if you take off all the paint, you take off the angles, you still have a four by four. And this is one that I made just to show how simple it is to actually do. This one is 12 inches long. So if I use a standard four by four by eight foot long, I could actually get eight of these out of one four by four. It is currently selling for $9 and 68 cents in my area. So with knowing that this is just a four by four, the big question is this angle. This is a 60 degree angle. So a lot of miter saws will not go out to that 60 degrees. If you can go out to 55 degrees, you're still gonna get a similar look. If you wanted to get this sharp angled look, you could do that with a circular saw, or if you wanted to use the miter saw, you could use this jig that I taught you how to make in the last tips and tricks video and knock this thing out in just a couple of minutes. The most time consuming thing, of course, is gonna be the paint but really that's not bad at all either because I just use spray paint. To start with, I just painted the entire thing white, put painter's tape around to separate the different colors that I wanted, threw on a couple of different colors, drilled a half of an inch hole through the top, threw in some rope. Now I have a $40 handmade sculpture. So what do you sell these things for? Again, this is a decorative item that if someone wants for their pool, matches their color scheme that they have going on, and it's unique enough, they're gonna pay for it. They're selling these three different sizes, nine, 12, and 15 inches for $40 each. I'll go ahead and make those a set of three. I have several different color variations that people could choose from. Throw 60 or 70 bucks on the set and see how they do. I mean, after all, you would have less than five bucks in all three. Just a reminder to check out our Patreon community. It is still growing like crazy. We have chats, we have behind the scenes, and we help each other out with problems that we're having with projects. If that sounds like something that you may be interested in, I'll make sure to throw a link on my website as well as in the description. Okay, so for this next one, I've been seeing these things everywhere and in all kinds of different styles. So for those of you that have followed the channel for a while, you probably remember me talking about how oftentimes companies will take something that is hot. I gave the charcuterie boards as an example. Then they just change things up as sales start to go down for that, call it something else or find another use for it. But it's essentially the same thing, just altered a little bit. This is an egg board. And again, this is just one example of several different styles of these that I actually think are really cool. But I chose to show you this picture because all that they have done is taken the cutting board template, which cutting boards have totally saturated the market right now, and by adding some holes to an existing design, have created a new product. And this is what I'm talking about whenever I say you need to shake things up a little bit, get creative. This is creative and pretty awesome. And again, these egg holders are everywhere right now. And since we raise chickens and gather eggs and all that fun stuff, I actually made one for my wife a couple of months ago. But regardless of how you decide to design these things, very simple concept. I actually made this one out of some walnut scraps, took a rectangle board that I had, did a little bit of routing down the side. And then for the legs, I decided to get a little wild there and just throw some arches in there. I actually designed this as a prototype and decided to not build any more of these. But the idea was to be able to make multiple of these and with the inset legs, you could actually stack them on top of each other. So for the example that I showed you earlier for this cutting board style, they want $95 for this and there's really nothing fancy about this. Everything there except for the egg holders could be done with a jigsaw. So the egg holders themselves, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. You can do it like I did, take an inch and a quarter bit, 
space your holes out three quarters of an inch to an inch apart and drill all the way through. Or if you like this concave look like they have here, this would take an inch and a quarter core box router bit that you would actually chuck up into a drill press. Honestly, either way looks really good and these things will sell. And the coolest thing about these builds is you can get as creative as you want. Like how I decided to put arched legs on this. The only thing that this thing has to have is something to hold the eggs. Other than that, go wild with it. As far as pricing, just like everything else, it's going to depend on how you market it, your area, and the type of material that you use. Again, they're wanting $95 for these. On the time and material that I have into this, in my area, if I were going to replicate this to sell, I'd throw $40, $45 bucks a piece on these and let them roll. All right, so this next one is another one from the old PB, and it's this reclaimed wood bench. And the term reclaimed can literally be anything that was once something else. So pallet wood is technically reclaimed wood. Farm wood is reclaimed wood. So keep that in mind whenever you're looking at a lot of these things. And then a lot of times they will actually put in the description the reclaimed look. So they're actually taking new wood and making it look like this. But this would be a perfect build if you have any access to barn wood, to any type of old wooden siding, or really just about anything that looks beat up. Or if you wanted to go in a totally different direction with it, you could actually use this exact same design and create a modern look or a modern rustic look. And they are wanting $560 for this bench. And this bench is super simple to build. So the first thing that you're probably going to notice about this is that the legs are sitting at mitered bevels. Don't freak out. This is actually very easy to do. And I'm about to show you how to do this on your miter saw. And that miter bevel is actually what gives it this cool farmhouse look. The legs are angled back and they're beveled out for stability. This bench is 50 inches long. The seat board is eight inches wide. And in total, it is 20 inches tall. The seat itself is one inch thick. And it looks like for the legs, they've actually used the off cuts for a straight line rips where you rip off the edges of the sides. So you can have a perfectly square board in the center. So essentially this is scraps. To me, they look a little bit too thin. For the legs themselves, I would probably use like an inch and a half by an inch and a half. Then for the crossbar, really doesn't matter. I would just use a one inch by an inch and a half material. So before I show you how to cut these legs, let me tell you how they assembled this thing. If you look really close at how the crossbar is joined to the legs, they just use black screws. Okay, so they're trying to make something look super rustic, primitive Americana and they've used screws. Come on, PB, you can do better than that. Throw a dowel in there or shake it up a little bit because they didn't use screws back then. They're using hand-forged square nails, mortise and tenon dowels, everything except for screws. But even using screws, they're selling the heck out of these things, so you do you. And for me, I would drill these babies out, throw some dowels in there, contrast the color a little bit so people will actually notice that it is connected with dowel joinery, and then truly market it as primitive Americana. I would do this for the legs as well as joining it to the top. So now that you know how simple it is to put together, let me show you how simple it is to cut these legs. All right, so let me show you just how easy this is gonna be. I'm gonna start off by beveling my saw 15 degrees, and then I'm going to angle it or set my miter at 15 degrees. I'll make my first cut, slide the board down, make my second cut, and we're done. Simple as that. So this is a, oh, I hit myself in the face with this thing. So this is a one and a half by one and a half board that I just mess around with to try to figure out this angle and bevel. And what I came up with that will give you something that looks like this picture is a 15 degree angle with a 15 degree bevel. It'll look like this. So we'll pretend like this is the floor here with that angle and bevel sitting flush. You can see that it actually angles back and bevels out. And the great thing about this is you'll need the exact same cut on the opposite end. So once you set your saw up, you can cut all of your legs at once. So since we're using the exact same angle and bevel for the top, top's gonna sit like this. So now what about this crossbar? So if this is sitting at an angle and a bevel, then what should this cut be? Since the crossbar in this is actually following the angle of the bevel, the only thing that you have to do to this crossbar is put that 15 degree angle on each end. You don't even have to worry about the bevel on these and install. It's as simple as that. So as you started to break this down in your head, you may have noticed that really wanted to build this, but said, I can't do miter bevels and forgot about it. So hopefully just by showing you how easy that was, next time you run into a situation like this, you'll know that you can figure it out. But while we're talking about benches, this next one is actually on the best sellers list and it's 600 bucks. Does it look kind of like the one that we just did? 
Yes, where the other one was more of kind of like a sleek, dainty look. This is more of that chunky style that we've talked about. So the legs themselves, you look at them from a side view, they are not angled back. Since the seat on this is just as wide as the last one, I'm going to go off the same 15 degree angles that we use for the legs. The only difference is going to be we won't have to put a bevel on it. So the legs just have a 15 degree cut on each end and they're 16 inches long. The crossbar that connects the two, again, 15 degree angles on each side. And this bench is actually a little bit bigger. It's 60 inches long. The top is all made out of four inch thick material. These look like four by sixes, but really you could use about any type of thicker material that you would have. The legs are probably two by twos or an inch and a half by an inch and a half. And then to connect all of these parts together, there are a ton of different ways to do it. You could go as simple as the old PB and throw some screws in the sides. You could use dowel joinery, or if you wanted to actually hide these screws, you could use pocket hole screws on the inside and cover those up with a pre-made plug. But I showed you the second style of bench because I love benches. Okay, so almost every house that you go into they're going to have a bench somewhere. It's going to be on their porch. It's going to be where they put their shoes on. It's going to be at the foot of their bed. They're going to have a bench somewhere. That means that your potential customer base for a bench is pretty much every household. And that's why a $600 bench makes it onto a bestseller list. So again, always keep that in mind whenever you're trying to decide what to build, who your customer base is going to be. Will this product only appeal to a very small group of people or will it appeal to a huge group of people? The larger the customer base that you can appeal to, the better your chance of making sales are. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and have taken something from it. And if nothing, else take this from it we live in a world where people might question you well no they're going to there's no might to it people are going to question you and that is when your self-belief becomes your strongest armor so trust in your abilities and trust that those abilities will make your dreams come true and let that be the thing that drives you that drives you and pushes you to success and just know that i believe in you or I wouldn't have this channel. So now it is your turn. It is your turn to believe in yourself. So until next time, keep your chin up, fear nothing, get up, get out, and go make something. See ya.